we got dial up here in the studio. There it is. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? You're muted. Your mic's muted. Muted. There you go. There you All go. Right, awesome. So Mike's yeah, fresh yeah, off a of scouting great, great. trip. Yep, you're fresh off a scouting trip down to Central PA with Sean, uh, Bald Eagle State Forest. Do you want to bring us up to speed on how things went down there? We got a little bit of time this evening before MK is able to log in, so we're going to cover some, uh, do some homework and cover some bases with stuff of that. Big thing for a while. Um, I'm sh it's still a, a obviously a very uh, uh, hot, uh, hot, uh, hotly contested um, topic, and I think it's you know obviously because. Um, of of a lot of the, the people, there are a lot of people's love for Bob Gimlin, you know, because Bob uh, Bob was supposedly, even though you know, again, um, Bobby Short had some, you know, and I think there was Scott Carpenter read some stuff, and I can bring this, I can talk of this. I was going to talk to MK about it, and hopefully he'll be here soon. He's here. Oh, he's here. Yep. Ah, is he here? He's in, he's, in, uh, he's in, logged in. Did he? Let's get him in there. Is is, is can you bring him in? Is the, there he is? All right, Mr. MK Davis. Boy, I tell you, buddy, we've been stretching it out. You know, like television here. Well, so I'm first, sorry about that. No, no, I'm glad that you and Deb made it home. Okay, thanks for for racing home. Um, I do want to let you know what we've been talking about to get you up to speed. Um, first of all, how are things down in Mississippi? Uh, well, we get a lot of rain. I just ran through a pretty good little storm there. Um, but I'm here, so <laughs> well, you had you had time to take your raincoat off. Uh, you, if you're not dodging, dodging tornadoes this time of year, it I'm, seems like you got the the people are trying to take your gas away. You got the COVID, and now you got the rainstorms. I tell you, Mississippi sounds like a fun place to be. Well, it can be. Uh, it's it's got its good and bad points. Now, did you grow up in Mississippi? Are you from born and raised? Yeah. And uh, what was your? I mean, so uh, bring us up to speed for people who don't know MK Davis. This is MK. We, you know, we've been talking. Um, so what we've covered so far, MK, is we talked about, and we'll, we'll let you uh, uh, answer any of these things. Is really what we talked about is we br we brought up your the Bluff Creek Croucher video. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what we did is I played the the original one, and then I played your the one with the what's in the bag. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I played yeah. I played your entire video of that uh, your 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 unedited YouTube video the three minutes and fourteen seconds. So can you real quick before we jump into other stuff? Um, first of all, Mike had a good question about the problem. What was when you took when you had the Croucher video, the original one? What were the circumstances behind that video? What captured that? What kind of camera? What were what was going on there? Uh, that, well, that occurred in two thousand and eight, and I had a Panasonic camera. Uh, it was uh, the kind that had the three-color chip. It took excellent video, but it was one of the very first that allowed you to take stills as well. Now, that was a trail cam. Uh, well, it wasn't a trail cam. It was a video camera. Oh, okay. All right, so it was handheld. So this was – you were holding the camera. video camera, right. Okay. Um, we had been up on the hill, up on up the mountain, rather, mm -hmm. uh, and – and I came down ahead of the other two guys. They had foot problems, and they they were nursing their feet. So I came on down, and I came across the creek, and then I came up the opposite bank, mm -hmm. uh, kind of hidden from the creek. You know, it's a trail along the creek bottom. And I walked that trail and came out uh, back into the creek. And I was just going to film them whenever they came, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was sitting there just kind of filming down the creek and up the creek and and alternately uh, taking video and, and stills. I never saw it. And uh, I was looking in that little small viewfinder and and it was dark under there. It, it, it was even though it was daylight, you know, up under the, the growth on both sides of the creek, it gets quite dark. And so I was, I, I eventually I walked that way and I walked pretty close to it, but uh, reviewing the video, uh, uh, apparently I walked very close to it and, and it kind of backed up into the bushes when it became aware and just hid you know, pull some limbs and stuff down and he just hid. 
uh, didn't move. Now, how come you stopped filming? Uh, you didn't know it was there, um, but it seems like you, you know how. And again, this is kind of, this is a lot like. And these are just questions I have. We haven't discussed any of this so far. It was I thought it was kind of a trail cam thing. I didn't know that you were the one filming it, um, so you didn't see it was there. Uh, and then you put the uh, you put the uh, camera away, and then you recognized it after when you were reviewing the film. Uh, uh, seven years later. See, to me, there's a still from the film right there. And that, to me, that looks like, uh, uh, and again, it is only one still, but it does, to me, look like somebody kind of sitting there reading the map. And again, well, this I is in hindsight. I don't dispute that, mm -hmm. uh, but I've tried uh, every trick I know to, to, to bring out something that would tell me that it has clothes on and I, I can't do it. It's, it's, uh, kind of a mono color, mono texture all the way from the top to bottom. Um, so, you know, I, I can only assume since there was no one there but us, we were 25 miles back in. Uh, there's you ha only way to get there was this switchback road that would take you down there at the time. You could go all the way down to the creek. Uh, and there was just no one else there, uh, unless, <laughs> unless unless he walked in. Right. Well, I mean, they would have to walk in. And again, yeah. I, I wasn't there. I'm just looking at the the I'm playing Monday morning quarterback here and looking at the film. Um, but that's what that's so that's what we were talking about. And again, that was just that's just uh, I th I don't think that that would have as much momentum if it hadn't been all the work that you had done leading up to that point. With uh, first of all, you know, I want to thank you uh, for doing all the work that you did with. The, the original Patterson Gimlin film, you know, because I don't think a lot of, I think when people look at the 4K stabilized version that they're looking at, which is stretched and not accurate, they don't realize that somebody back in 2005, 2006 was putting the original stuff together that you did and the work that you did. If you could ballpark it with every, if you could explain what you did before this whole, before we got into the whole Chris Murphy thing, right? Explain to people what work you were doing with the PG film originally before the whole massacre thing started. Yeah, uh, well, I, essentially, I, I began an effort to uh, to find the best uh, frames uh, that to work with uh, the highest quality, and you start there, and then you see if you can uh, correct some of the the problems uh, that that the film had with lensing defects. Uh, which is uh, some of the focusing problems. Uh, inexpensive lenses, they normally don't, it don't, it's not a bothersome thing because people are taking their grandmother or somebody like that. And But when you try to magnify an inexpensive lens, you begin to see that there are some problems that you, it inevitably crop up. And, and, and one of them is, uh, chromatic aberration, what they call a chromatic aberration. Uh, in other words, not. Yeah, hold on, hold on, just a minute. Let me shut this door. Okay. So, <laughs> so I think I think uh, I think what he's talking about is I think that you know the 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 camera that and, and again we'll have him discuss this. MK, I think what you're talking about is the original lens on the camera that shot the PG film was kind of a point and click, inexpensive nineteen. Uh, well, probably expensive for the time, but uh, kind of a, a, a catch-all um, home video camera. Well, I mean, even that's not not for certain. Uh, they they said that they took uh, took it with a K100 um, Kodak, but I spoke to um, a, a man whose father rented him that camera, mm -hmm. and he said he rented him two cameras. And he rented them at the same time, and one of them was a Kodak K100, and the other was a Bolex, which is a far more superior camera. Right. Um, it was shot on Kodachrome 2, which I think was uh, kind of the uh, the softer gradient, um, uh, less contrast or, uh, contrasty uh, type of film, correct? It was a very soft gradient well, film. Well, it's, it's, it's not it's not the... Uh, you know, it's 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 probably in no a normal film taking. It's considered to be very good quality film. Mm -hmm. uh, but but when you're trying to forensically examine something that's very 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 small, 
uh, you know, you do have contrast problems and things yeah. like that, which you can largely correct. Um, so, you know, it's a, a Kodachrome 2 is, is, is very, very high. It used, they used to keep, keep it top secret how to develop Kodachrome 2. Well, it's a black and white film, correct? No, no, the, no, 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 it's not black and white. It's color. Well, I thought it was black and white. That was the color was added in the in the the uh, processing. Well, it, it's it's added by dipping the film into a, a a dye, right? You know, and 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 the color film is taken in layers, right? Okay, so you have to dye it. Uh, externally soak it in dye and you you time out you watch your watch mm -hmm. you time out how long it takes for red to go to the bottom the bottom layer and then you pull it out and you wash it and then you you uh, you put it in bleach and then you time out how how long it takes for bleach to penetrate uh, the the top two layers, but not the red. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you bleach that red back out. So you only have one layer on the bottom that's red. And then you put it in the next color, and you time out how long it takes for that color to make it through two layers. And then you quickly pull it out, and you do the same thing again. You bleach the top layer out. And then you have red, and uh, I'm, I forget which color is next. But, um, but you get so you the, get the development, you get the, you get the yeah, colors and stuff. We don't need to right. It's it's a <laughs> it's a it's a dip dye process, right. mm -hmm. and it has to it has to be done you know extremely uh, laborious so and accurately accurately. Yeah. Uh, but the general result is that it's highly stable film. It just does not go bad. It doesn't succumb to chemical degrad degradation and things like that. Uh, it's a very good film. Uh, now, what, do you, and, what do you know about the, the, the Blue Creek uh, Mountain uh, footage that Renee shot? Was that shot on the same camera, same film? I don't, I don't believe it is. Uh, it, it looks to me like a, a different setup. Yeah, so what we did is a uh, is a uh, before uh, I did some we I brought some uh, I did like a little scorecard for people uh, before to let them know who everybody is so we can kind of so this way when we're mentioning the the Blue Creek Mountain and we're mentioning the Patterson giving the people people already know the difference as, as far as what I know um, if if I say anything that that doesn't jive with uh, you know uh, there it is uh, you, that's fine you can put it bring it back down. Um, um, Bill, but if there's something that that doesn't jive with what I'm saying, I, okay, I want you to feel free to say, "Hey, no, that's this is my take on it," because obviously, this is your this is your wheelhouse here. <laughs> so, uh, so, okay. to, so, um, so, so you're working on this stuff. Chris Murphy comes up to you. Chris Murphy's I haven't read his book yet, Bigfoot Film Journal. Um, so Chris approaches you um, to to do some work for him um with the the footage to get it does does he want stills what does chris want for his book from you how does that relationship start oh you're, t you're talking about the uh the tracking dog film yeah well the blue the big creek the bigfoot yeah, film right, journal right. book yeah got yeah. you yeah. got you uh, yeah uh he he told me that he wanted uh stills for publication from mm -hmm. several people on there and one of them was robert titmus um uh, which you know, it became kind of a stink because people say, well, that's not Robert Timmons, but he thought it was. And also, you know, the ladies down there at the uh, China Flat Museum there in Willow Creek thought it was Robert Titmus too. And they knew him well. Right. Uh, I got to looking and there seems to be two different people. I mean, just looking at them, they're similar looking. Uh, but one looks a little older. Now, yeah, you're, uh, so Titmus was, I think, five foot five, and then you're talking. I think you're talking about Keith Keith Sirazi, right? Who was yeah, uh, Keith Sirazi, yeah, right, right, exactly. Which was the he was so he was the the supposedly the Kent Aviation pilot that flew those guys into well, Blue Creek. He probably was. I mean, right. I, I, uh, I, I don't dispute any of that. 
Okay, so back to the so back to uh, so back to Chris Murphy. I didn't mean to cut you off there. So so he asked you to to do some do some 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 uh, stills for his book. Uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, well, right I did. It had to be above three hundred DPI and you know some some different constraints, and he needed somebody to to do that for him. Uh, so I did that for him. But uh, Chris Murphy is. I, I have to say this about Chris Murphy. You know, uh, he's probably responsible uh, for uh, bringing bringing those old films back. You know, because mm -hmm. he took he took some personal chances. You know. And uh, I, my hat's off to him. Now, did he did he uh, did he get the rights from from the Patterson family, or how did how did where were the rights? Who who did Chris ob ob obtain the rights uh, for this stuff, or was it you? Well, or? You got Chris. Chris was no stranger to the to this film, and he was no stranger to the Dehendens. He was Renee's uh, former business manager. Okay. So, you know, he had uh, connections there with those people. Okay, so so you're you're working doing this stuff for Chris. You're putting in God knows how many hours because I've looked at the the footage that you've done and I've seen the the and, and the enormous amount of time that you put into that stuff. When did you start seeing things that you that when did you start forming your theory because um was did Politis play? Was David Politis involved in any of this stuff? It sounds like he was kind of stirring the pot a little bit, um, and then dipped out. I, I, how did? What's the the? If you give me a timeline here of events uh, in broad strokes. Well, I mean, David Politis, uh, you know, he comes in later. And people, when they start looking into it on their own, mm -hmm. you know, their 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 research is their own research. Right. Of course. You know? Uh, as far as uh, a theory, my theory was mostly driven by information that I got from Ms. Patterson. Uh, and then when I saw that, that tracking dog video, it was uh, sort of similar to what she was talking about. Uh, so, so, you know, a, th a theory is just a theory. It's, it is not. I don't have any hard evidence. I don't even have evidence that Robert Gimlin and Roger Patterson even took that film. It's they're not on it. Well, you're talking you're talking about the one with Snowflake, the dog, the, the Patterson film. Oh, the, okay. Well, you, I just want to give you what I mean. It's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of vagaries. Well, I mean, if I film something, uh, and I can't be on the film and, and shoot it. So real, right, I just want to say that I want to give a shout are. out to I want to thank Real Truth for for donating to the show. Uh, so go ahead, uh, MK. Go ahead. Sorry, you only you only have their word for it. True. True. You know that that's all you have. Uh, it's a it's it's a uh, in in most anybody's book, it's considered to be a, a rather fantastic claim. Well, it's never yeah. been it's never been matched by any you know it's, it's no, the, no, one, one, yeah. the film itself in its original raw form, especially on the generated copies, was inadequate. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know that's what was pretty much presented, you know, publicly uh, to to not only for media broadcast but also for scientific purposes. Uh, they, 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 that's what they released to the scientists. And, um, when I saw a couple of frames from the original film that it got leaked out, I knew immediately that there had to be a much better version of this film. Uh, cause you can't get a frame like that. You can't get a good picture from a bad film. It just doesn't happen no matter what you do to enhance it. So it, it, it was uh, fantastically clear, and, and and the contrast was good too. Now, are you talking about like three five two in the Patterson Gimlin film? What what? And, and, and I mean, what what frames are you talking about? Would this be something that the public knows, or is this something that you privately know? Yeah, I, I privately know, um, and so I began there. I began an inquiry uh, that led me to Christopher Murphy and Chris okay. Chris Murphy is a, he, he, like anyone else wanted to see 
if the film was real or not. And the film itself uh, was, if you could get those copies of those frames, should have been good enough to tell its own story. Now you, now you. Let me ask you a question there. Um, now you uh, admit, or or you, you're fully uh, uh, in the know now that there's the you, there's the the Blue Creek Mountain film, and there's the Patterson Gimlin film. Correct? You agree that there are two separate films? Yeah, they're 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 separate films. Okay. Uh, uh, but they're if you knew the area, they're really close together. They're not very far. You you can go leave that Blue Creek Mountain Road and go down and come out at Bluff Creek. Right. So I've got I want to put up a slide if it's okay. And this is a John Green quote. Uh, it was an email that was sent, and this was in response to Politis's exports and stuff. So I'm gonna just bring it up on the screen. And this is uh if you got the the uh there, I'll go ahead and read this. MK who certainly does exist, and Dave Politis experts who present who perhaps don't. We're not finding things that don't exist in the movie Roger Patterson took. They were finding them in the movie that Rene de Hinden took at a different place with the leaves green instead of red, with different people in it, with no relationship whatsoever to the Patterson movie. I can understand, I can't understand how anyone could imagine the frames in which all the leaves were green were exposed at the same time of year with the frames with all the deciduous leaves were red. I can see nothing similar about the two sites except for a large log that appears in each, but at different elevations above the ground, which MK seems to consider evidence as a sand bar having been filled and compacted before Patterson took his movie to cover up the burial of Sasquatches. The more I try to explain this, the stranger it seems that anyone could think this stuff up, let alone go public with it. Uh, that's a John Green email back in 2009. Uh, what's your take on that 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 email, uh, MK? I mean, uh, that's obviously one side of the coin. So, well, I mean, that's that's that. You're right. It's one side of the coin. Uh, you know, to to me, I mean, I, I I try to give credit where credit's due, and I get respect people, but I, I I'm I'm only interested in film. I'm not interested in anyone's story. And I'm sure John Green has a good story. Well, but he I was mean, there. I mean, he was at the one shoot well, I mean, on film. Yeah. yeah, he's on the film. He's on the film. <laughs> but 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 I'm interested in what led me to believe that the two could be connected was the information I got from Mrs. Patterson, which I took to heart. Now, some of the stuff, and this is, let me ask you if these are correct, if I can read these, because I don't know if these have been verified or if these are even the same ballpark as what you're talking about. But these were, this was on Scott Carpenter's uh, YouTube channel, and he read these, and supposedly these came through Bobby Short's email to him. And these are some claims that Bobby claimed to know. Whether they're true or not, I have no idea. Um, I'll just read them off real quick if it's okay with you, and you tell me if they're complete fantasy or if there's something that you may have heard from. Sound fair? Well, I'll tell you if I know. Yeah, exactly. So uh, she mentioned these. She, she said that there were a group of professional hunters called the Canadians were brought in. They were specially trained with – they brought in a trained attack dogs that were very vicious. The, this team was specialized – in Sasquatch removal. They had done it multiple times. They were kind of like Bigfoot hitmen, and they made a very good living at it. They uh, tracked and captured, this is what she claims, now I have no idea, that she says that somebody had told her they tracked and captured uh, a juvenile Bigfoot, staked it out um, in Bluff Creek, and kind of created a kill zone to lure in adults to rescue the infant. Uh, the hunters shot up to five adults, maybe more, maybe six with the infant. Um, hunters all took trophies, heads, hands, and hides. Uh, the bodies were piled into a pit and bur buried. And uh, PG could film, but were not. They did film, but they were not part of the killing squad and were on site. Does any of that make any? Have you heard any of that before? Well, yeah, uh, I, I suppose that I have. If the, that theory is, you know, it can a theory can take on a life of its own. People add to it, or I don't. Oh, I don't know. Of course, I, I don't know what Bobby Short found out on her own. Uh, I have no no way of knowing that. Right, and I'm not. I'm just asking if you had heard any of those before, because they seem. I just made. I was trying to hunt down research that Bobby had done. 
you know, again, I'm researching this because you're on the show, um, but I can only take, I've only, I can only read so many books and just digest so much. Thank you, Marla, for the donation um, and, and digest so much information. And that's my side of the coin. So obviously that's why I'm very excited to have here, have you on the show um, to, to, to talk about things like this, because, you know, obviously you're, 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 you, you, this stuff, you didn't pull it out of thin air. You had, you know, you're not just going to go public with all this stuff just because you, you feel like you need the attention. You seem like a much smarter person than that. No, I don't need that kind of attention. <laughs> you know, I, I've got uh, other things that I, I like to do and I, I just, to just continue to, to beat the drums for this this thing here i i'd prefer not to you know uh I've, I've gone as far as i can go toward finding out any of the details i feel like the uh and and john green's gone uh mm -hmm. renee dandon's gone bobby's gone bobby short's gone mm -hmm. um you know i, I just kind of put it uh kind of put it on a back burner and, and just, you know, we, would I like to know the answer? Yes, I would. I think, I think everybody would. would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but it's, it's, do I have to know it? No, no, I don't have to know it to, to be able to put a reasonable degree of faith in the film because the film is, is kind of speaks for itself at, at this point in time. Now, Charlie, you said you got a couple of questions you want to bring up from uh, somebody in the chat. Charlie, oh, yeah. you want to go ahead and read those? Yeah. Vincent had a couple of questions. First of all, the first, First question was, why do you think Bob Gimlin is lying? And you said it's because it was, you were talking about it to his wife, I guess. No, that he was. Uh, so go, read the question well, as yeah, it is. Why, please, no, says, why the heck do you think Bob Gimlin is lying? No, I, 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 I don't use the term lying. I use the term uh, the story is not possible. The story gives. Uh, because of, of uh, the constrictions on the development of the film, you can't take you could, can't take Kodachrome two, and and take it on a Friday and show it on a Sunday, <laughs> and and people immediately knew that, but way back when, when it happened and challenged them on it, and they all they did was just shrug their shoulders, you know. Um, but it, it, I told you, I went into a little bit of it. Yeah, it's we a, talked about a, it last night. A, so, yeah. a, yeah. a two-week minimum turnaround. Uh, and there are only two places in the United States that even that did it. Now, I did reach out. I did try to reach out to Kodak several times. I did email them. I called the corporate office. I called the historical office to try to get any type of list of places that, because I wanted to do my due diligence, you know, obviously, and I couldn't get anybody to return my phone calls or my emails to, 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 uh, to, to clarify where you could get Kodachrome 2 film developed in 1967. So yes, I will take your word on that. And yes, it does seem. Well, that's that's what I was say. able to find out. And I talked to some people who knew some of the inner workings there and, and they, they said that it was highly coveted. They made a, a, each employee that worked on that film had to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the kind of uh, processing that was done. And so people who were aware of that or knew it when they heard the story coming from Patterson and Gimlin knew that that was not possible. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a Kodachrome two. I think was was the, was brought out in 1961. So I find, I mean, I, while I, I understand and I agree for the most part what you're saying, I, I find it hard to believe that Kodak would let the thing ride for four or five years without developing more than two places in the country to develop the film. Although well, they I, tried I, some other things, they tried to uh, create <laughs> machines, failed miserably, yeah. probably. Uh, the uh, kiosks, uh, you know, the machines. I in. remember those drive throughs when I was a kid. We could remember those ones in the parking lot. We could drop off your film, your 110 film, back in the 70s oh, yeah. and 80s. Uh, yeah, they wanted to make money, you know, but it was a real highly specialized film that was a little superior product. Mike, you've been awful quiet so far. Mike, you got any thoughts on what we're talking about? You're, you're muted there, Mike, but uh, uh, do you have any, uh, you want to weigh in on some of the stuff we've been talking about? It's definitely a lot. Definitely a lot to process. Um, what I was talking about before MK, when you came here, uh, you know, before you signed on, 
it's in my opinion, it's definitely difficult enough to have this, you know, particularly niche subject to get universally accepted by mainstream science, mainstream media. Um, I'm not saying, you know, the, you know, the, the, these theories that you're presenting, everything we're talking about, is or isn't real, but you have to agree the stuff definitely sounds out. You know, it's definitely pretty friggin' outlandish. Um, in terms of, you know, getting, I mean, the subject of Bigfoot is outlandish. Yes. It's it's a you rabbit that, hole all its own. It, it's it's it, it's all outlandish. Right. The only thing you have is a really good film of a really outlandish thing. <laughs> that's true. That's that's quite a that's that's what that's I'm trying to what I'm getting at though is if you're gonna get, you know, like mainstream science, mainstream media, in my opinion, to you know, to start to like take, you know, this you know, feel start with this more seriously, it's just my opinion, you kinda of have to like ease people ease people into it and you know i just feel like certain narratives like this certain topics like this do you think that's kind of like you know moving at too fast a pace for something like that or no i don't know about that i don't know uh whatever pace that that j it that happens to to uh, be the pace you know mm -hmm. uh whatever, however evidence comes in you don't always have control of that um sure and it's yeah. You know, the Patterson film is not a is has not been duplicated in any measure, mm -hmm. uh, and ever ever since it was taken, uh, you know, all everything that's been taken since then, with the exception of a few films, has been you know very difficult to even interpret. Uh, so you know it, it's it's a it's a pretty high bar, uh, anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, I'm real proud that I had something to do with bringing that film uh, up a, a few notches in quality uh, and and stabilizing it and 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 so I hope that that it survives. Uh, I, I think your your stabilization and your work, your your pre massacre work, um, was is it smokes the 4K stuff now because it's so much. I, and I apologize, I don't have. Uh, I can't, couldn't find a good clip of your work by itself, except for that RUTV one that I didn't uh, didn't want to post, um, because it seems that the, your your clip was far and beyond um, better uh, than the 4K stretch. If you have a link to that that you can send me, MK, I'd love to uh, to share that with our audience uh, where they can look yeah, at yeah, your yeah, work on its own. I've got a uh, I've got a web page. Uh, it's a WordPress site. It's called uh, the Davis Report. And you can find it at the Davis Report WordPress .com. And it's got it runs those GIF files, mm -hmm. uh, on, you know, without being having to render them into video. And and it, it it's got some good stuff on it. It's uh, you can peruse through there and find pretty much all that quality stuff. I have to apologize. I did put up a contact sheet at the end, which I'll throw when we get the end. And I did have your uh, your YouTube channel, and I did not get the WordPress on there. So again, if you want to read that one more time, MK, uh, your WordPress website, just so everybody can write it down. Oh, yeah, um, the the Davis Report dot WordPress dot com, and that has, I believe, it has your archives month by month of the archives when you're actually involved with all that work. Correct? Right. You you can click on. Uh, uh, the banner up up top, the film banner, and it'll take you to the latest postings. Uh, sometimes when you go there, it'll be a, an older posting up, you know, so that will update it. So what are you doing now, MK, now in 2021 when you're, when you're, uh, you, you and your wife, uh, obviously you're up to speed with your shots. Both of you had your shots. You're uh, heading back out. You said you were heading back out to Bluff Creek, uh, hopefully sometime this year, correct? Yeah. If the, if the, uh, the COVID poli politics works out, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we uh, are in uncertain times, you know. Right. Uh, so so um, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting old and I feel it. <laughs> well, you uh, look so, great, buddy. You look great. And I appreciate yeah, you coming that. on. Um, you know, I would like to, to, to throw it to Charlie and to Mike, uh, Mike and see if we've got any questions from the, the chat. We did talk pretty heavily with the, the people. We were going to initially reserve some time at the end to go through any questions that needed to be asked, but we did. We fielded a lot of, there was talk. Maybe we'll bring this up one more time, MK, and because it seemed <laughs> the hemorrhoids. 
Okay, can you want to speak about the hemorrhoids claim with the pictures? Because this got this got away from us real fast. We had RNs talking to other people saying you don't know about ass fucking hemorrhoids and all this other stuff. So let's let's hear it from you where that came from the hemorrhoid story, and we're going to put put a lid on this once and for all tonight, people. Well, I saw I saw it in the what I call the first walk sequence. The work the first walk sequence is very different from the look back. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very famous uh, in the camera. The cameraman is below the film subject looking up at it. Uh, and he's looking straight up into the rear end of it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's going straight away from him. And so it falls over. And when it falls over, it catches itself, you know, like down on its knuckles or whatever. And the, it, it's mooning the camera. And you can see right up between the cheeks. <laughs> and and uh, when I realized that, you know, then I, I, I did some color uh, enhancement. And it, it began to take on the appearance of some kind of problem. You know, now, so it's either, it's either Patty had hemorrhoids or Bob Hieronymus had hemorrhoids, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He never mentioned having having them. And and the reason they say hemorrhoids uh, is I, I'm not a medical man, but uh, I think that when I when I first uh, public published that there was something in there, uh, Bobby Short took it. She's a she was a nurse and she took it to a doctor at the hospital, and the doctor said he thought that it was hemorrhoids. Uh, now, hemorrhoids can come for a lot of reasons, but, uh, you know, there's always that possibility that there was a birth, you know. <laughs> uh, if the, there the, was the R, yes, the RN did say something about female hemorrhoids, and the, they, they seem to be a, a – oh, God, I can't believe we're talking more about this. Uh, <laughs> but they are more prevalent during uh, during a, um, a pregnancy and after a pregnancy. So, so therefore yes, – the, if, 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 it, if it's a man – if it's a man in a suit, then that then it's a silly it's a silly talk, right? But but if it's real, <laughs> and it's real flesh and blood, and it is female apparently, well, well then certainly that it could you know there's nothing to keep it from having them. I, See, mean, I promise. A, I promise. No condition. <laughs> I promise. It's so funny. I promised so many people that we wouldn't talk about the hemorrhoids tonight. When I had people go, "I'll well, cover anything, but don't talk about the hemorrhoids." And then what happens is you get stuck in traffic a little bit, and next thing you know, we're talking about hemorrhoids every five freaking minutes. So, Stephen yeah, Stryfer, right, right. I it's apologize not, for not, the hemorrhoids. I'm not an expert <laughs> in hemorrhoids, and I'm not going to swear those are hemorrhoids. Exactly. Well, in 15 minutes, I'm going to be. Well, yeah, here's exactly. my question. Though. Here's my question, though, regarding all that. Um, you know, the uh, Karen that we, uh, you know, the Karen going back and forth before. What you're talking about saying now about it giving you know hemorrhoids potentially being a sign of if it was a female you know it was a sign of it giving birth what other oh, signs yeah were there and you know if so what were they were there any other signs in that video based on you know like looking at patty how you broke it down that gave you reason to believe besides you know the possibility of hemorrhoids that this subject might have given birth at some point this is the know, last like, thing we're talking about. Yeah, number one, when they went down to investigate Bluff Creek, it was to find a set of tracks. There were three tracks, and one was small, a small track. Uh, so, so I, I, I really like walking when they pop out of the womb, or oh boy, I, I, I really don't know. <laughs> I don't know how Bigfoot, uh, if they come out with big feet or able to walk or what. I don't know. Uh, that that's the whole purpose of me trying to sure duplicate that film or either, you know, go into those areas to try to find out some more about them. Uh, th that's, that's all you can do. Uh, the, the film is 60 seconds, which is far longer and far sharper and clearer than what you normally see. Uh, well, of, it's the of gold standard. Wood. Yeah. Yeah, now let yeah, me ask yeah. you a question, MK. Um, has have, have, whether or not um, have you found has anybody found any physical proof, anything at all, uh, i.e., bullet casings, bones, anything to substantiate the claim of a mass grave or a Bigfoot massacre at Bluff Creek anywhere uh, reported or not? I found a bone. 
uh, it's before I even had any idea that anything like that could have even been possible. Uh, and it was sticking up out of the sand at, at uh, downstream from the sandbar about 500 feet. And it was old and cracked and had every appearance of being a, a human, that little small bone in the leg. Uh, I told my friend, I said, look at this. Uh, what you, he says, that looks like a human bone. And I said, well, I'll throw it up on the bank and I'll get it when I come back. And I forgot it. I, I walked right by it and didn't think about it until I was back in Mississippi. Uh, I had no idea at that time uh, that anything like that was possible or I certainly would have snagged that thing. <laughs> uh, but, but there again, I still don't know that that was what it was, but I would have liked to have been able to test it. I think uh, that probably I share an opinion with the rest of the planet that I think, uh, you know, did you get home? But did you like, when you forget your cell phone, did you tap your pockets and go, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I just thought about it. Uh, you know, I, I, I consider myself to be a very, very uh, inept researcher. I, 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 I do stumble into things, uh, 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 Mr. Magoo style. <laughs> uh, but, but I don't, I don't consider myself to be that great in the woods or anything like that. Uh, so, uh, uh, it's not surprising to me that I would forget something like that and walk walk away and leave it. I, I went back. I made a, another trip back as quick as I could get back to Bluff Creek, and I looked everywhere for it. But there had been high water, you know, had come through and swept it away, I guess. <laughs> Bluff Creek doesn't even look the same as it did when I first went down there. It, every the when we I went two years ago, the the water had cut these huge gaping channels across the sandbars and things, and you know it, it was uh, quite quite a change. And then they, a lot of undergrowth, uh, bushes and the like, juniper trees and and the, and the like. It was just you know very hard. It was hard to even to even navigate down there. Now let me ask you a question uh, regarding uh, uh, some other some of the the stills. So you had a, a frame, I believe it was right around uh, three five one, uh, where you you claim to have spotted a dog print, or some sort of or or that your process had brought out some sort of footprint, animal footprint. Uh, you yeah. would, would you like to elaborate on that and explain uh, what that was and and what you thought it was and and bring people up to speed on that? Yeah, I, I, it was in the frame three five two actually. Uh, Miss Patterson's, the one I got from her, mm -hmm. it was a four by five transparency. And it, most all the, all of the versions of three, five, two are cropped, mm -hmm. but that one was not. And it had more in the periphery and that print was in the periphery. And that print was, I've got no question in my mind that it was canine and, and it was also bright red. Now, did it strike you at all odd that it was a print by itself and there was no oh, trackway? You know, no, no. If you if you you mentioned the high contrast and low contrast uh, right. uh, features of, of different films, that film is low contrast. Uh, if you could if you can get the good, good, very best quality pictures and just back off on the brightness and boost the contrast, you see that it's very rough ground. Um, if you watch the dog handler and the tracking dog, he's the dog is tethered and it, and is prevented from putting its nose into, into that, to that little pool. He snatches it back. He told, uh, he told Al Hudson that, that the beast was going to kill the dog and he was going to be next. So you're talking about Snowflake, right? Uh, at the Blue Creek Mountain footage. Snowflake. Is, the dog's name was White Lady. Oh, was it White Lady? I thought it was Snowflake. No, it was White Lady. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it's a, uh, 
you know, that's where you get the, you know, John Green tried to present it as being like a, like a friendly house dog. But uh, Al told me, Al Hudson, that the, the dog handler told him that the dog was a killer uh, and that it was one of the baddest dogs in Canada. Well, that does back up. That does back up one of the those bullet points that that uh, that Bobby was claiming that you know specialized Sasquatch removal team with a trained uh, tracking dog that was very vicious. So yeah. that that ticks that box there. Um, so um, I don't see that, but then again, yeah. well, you know, they, I, they, I wasn't you know to, to transport a dog like that. You know, they they usually just give them a pill. And when they get off the plane, it takes them a while for that to wear off. And uh, you can get all the pictures you want to, loving up on him and hugging him or whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, that's why I say I don't, I don't, I don't really. It's the story is not my thing. Right. Whether whether it be John's story or Roger's story or or Bob Gimlin's story, that's that's not my thing. Uh, I'm so looking at the film itself. So here's the, um, here's the question I have just regarding like the, the regarding like the, uh, burial site, I guess, you know, what do you guys, what do you guys discuss? There's body sniffing dogs out there, bloodhounds, things like that. They have like, you know, tr tremendous senses, tremendous sense of smell. They use dogs to find like, you know, like dead bodies buried several feet under the ground. What's, have have you guys considered, you know, getting a bunch of like body sniffing dogs, blood hound, blood hound, or something like that, going to those areas to try and sniff out the burial site? Like, uh, I tell you, I don't, I don't have those kind of resources. It, it <laughs> I, I, I can barely get myself <laughs> out there. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that maybe something might could have you talking about like a cadaver dog. Uh, I, if after 50 years, I don't really don't know. I don't know what a dog's capable of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that type of dog. Uh, it, uh, it, it perhaps, uh, I did find some of the lime piles. Uh, that's a totally acidic forest. And I found using a tester, I found, uh, where, you know, they had used lime. They had lime down there because they were constructing a road. Uh, they constructed a road to, to get the log trucks down there. And this, the sand is too soft on its own. So they mix, they mix it with lime and let it set up and, and pack it down. And it, it, it forms a real hard surface. Right. Uh, you can see it in some of the, uh, uh, the tracking dog video. You can see it. Uh, they had made a, a nice road. You could have drove a Cadillac. on. Um, <laughs> So, so, so MK, uh, 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 let's say we're about 11 years removed from when you, uh, ballpark from when you first uh, started figuring out your, your massacre theory, about 11 years, correct? Somewhere on there? I, I really hadn't counted. It's ballpark, I, I would say, I somewhere 2008, 2009, somewhere on there. Um, do you, yeah. has anything changed your mind? Is, have you swayed? Are you more convinced ever, more than ever? Are you stepping back from it a little bit? I mean, uh, where are you at? I know you're moving ahead, which is great. You're, you're focusing on the future. Uh, but in your rearview mirror, are you, are you, do you regret any regrets at all? Uh, we're going to try no, to wind no, down the conversation. I, I don't mind stepping back or walking back anything that I feel like I'm in error, but I don't, I don't know that I'm in error, you know, uh, I have to know that I'm I, that I got it wrong, and then I'll step it back. Uh, I, I I I don't think that I would be doing much of a good a good job if I just let people's opinions override. You know what I've already done. Uh, everybody's got an opinion. Uh, people are attached to Bob, you know, and and to be honest with you. I have feelings for Bob. I have no, no, nothing against Bob. I'm not out to get him. Um, I just have this, this need to know, you know, the, 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 the nuts and bolts of that film. I think it's important. Now, have you, have you sat down face to face with Bob uh, Gimlet at any point? Have you had a heart to heart talk face sure. ever? Have you? Yes. 
Uh, and what was the takeaway from that? I mean, you know, you guys are two grown men uh, talking amongst yourselves. I don't know if it was in a public or if you guys had a moment to yourselves. Um, you know, you don't need to, I'm not asking you to quote Bob and speak for Bob, but, um, but obviously that didn't sway. You didn't feel like there was enough there to, to sway, to walk back anything. Correct. Actually, real no, quickly, I'm uh, sorry, guys. Um, just, you know, a comment regarding where we're talking about, like, you know, body sucking dogs and things like that. Randy Mahoney, uh, if I pr pronounce the last name, I'm sorry, says people who try to track them with dogs say the dogs won't track their scent. And I've actually, you know, like looking back, I've actually heard that before. I just thought that was like, you know, a little interesting uh, follow up to but to uh, throw in there regarding what we're talking about before. I'm sorry. Uh, that that may be true, but uh, uh, to a large extent, but I, I, I've been around dogs all my life. You can get a dog to 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 run down a polar bear. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just because it's a foreign scent. You have to train the dog to. He, they ignore foreign scents. Most most hunting dogs do. They go for what they're trained to go after. You you if you have that scent to train a dog with, then you can get him to follow that scent, no matter no matter what it is. So let's get back to where we were real quick. Because what we're going to do is we're going to start winding things down. We, um, it's you know it's coming on almost eleven o'clock, and we got to be out of here by eleven. Um, but uh, let, so Bob Gimlin talking to Bob. Um, there was no thing before um, we changed the uh, nothing to walk it back. You said MK with, uh, with no, and there was nothing, no reason to walk it back after talking to him. He uh, he uh, he went through about every kind of emotion there was to go through. And, and, and he said, uh, I'm a Christian now. He said, don't do this to me. And I have, I have no idea what, at that time, I wasn't fully, fully engaged in any kind of theory. <laughs> well, you were you persona know? non grata in Bob Gimlin camp for quite a while, weren't you? <laughs> I was just kind of puzzled about, you know, what he's talking about. Um, but we talked for about 45 minutes and he went through uh, from from almost tears all the way to to, uh, you know, just the whole gamut of emotions. And, and you know, that's I, I, I am not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Uh, I. I feel for him. I feel for Bob, I. I I don't have any ill will at all for him. Uh, and I, I just, I think that he's, he stands alone now, probably. It's one of the last, the last people that were involved in that affair. And, and certainly he knows things that he has not talked about. I know that, uh, but that's his choice. That's his choice. I wouldn't pressure him. Other I, I would love to have Bob on the show sometime. Yeah. I do think, and I, I have from everybody that I've spoken to that's met him and know him said, he's a generally a likable, great old cowboy guy that, you know, tells Regal stories and, he, and he's, you know, surrounded by people that love him and care for him. And I would like to, you know, there's, there's two thoughts here. He's either uh, made a very successful niche for himself, telling a lie and living out a lie, or he's, telling the truth and so so what if he, only he really knows and, and and more power to him i i i tend to believe him or want to believe him i should say uh but then again i don't know because i've never met the guy and i've never talked to him personally i haven't made any attempt at all to exploit in any way anything about this theory uh, I don't I haven't written any books. I haven't written any articles. I, uh, the only thing I've done is to make it available, uh, put it on the table. You can take it or leave it. You know, Fair enough. It, it's a possibility, but I don't have any hard proof. Uh, so that that's where it is. And that's why that's why I prefer when I go out to Bluff Creek, I'm not looking for the Patterson site. I'm not looking for Patterson memorabilia. Uh, I'm looking for Bigfoot. On that note, 
MK Davis, I would like to thank you very much for coming and joining us tonight on From Behind Tall Trees. I really appreciate you taking the time. We could fill up a whole another hour, but uh, we're going to clock out now. And um, last, any uh, Chuck, Mike, you guys, I see both have your mics muted there. Any last comments? Anybody uh, Anybody from the chat have any, any questions at all for MK or anybody else uh, before we sign off? Charlie, what's going on? Uh, MK, I just want to say thanks again for, uh, you know, Come on the show, and I got to you know pick up your wife and everything. So we really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your understanding. Absolutely, no, it's uh, it was great. I'm uh, just looking through the comments, and I'm just gonna leave it as is. Yeah, excellent. Mike, you're quick. muted there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, MK, I think yeah, uh, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to come on with us. Um, yeah, it was a great, great conversation. Wish we could uh, get into it a little more. Uh, definitely next time. Yeah, if I find anything new out that way. Uh, I'll let you know for sure. Uh, if you, yeah, if, if you can, if you can keep us posted, MK, if it's okay with you, I'm going to stay in touch with you. Um, if you can, uh, Bill, you want to bring up the contact sheet there for tonight's show? And again, uh, MK, if you want to read off your WordPress email, or I'm sorry, your webpage one more time, because I wasn't able to put it on here. So go ahead and read it off for us what the WordPress is. Yeah, sure. It's uh, the Davis Report, and it's at the Davis WordPress.com. And then his YouTube channel is Greenwave uh, 2010 FB, and his email is primateer at gmail.com. Uh, our Facebook is, if you like what you saw tonight, even if you didn't, uh, join our Facebook group, which is the Catscale Appalachian Research Collective. Again, Bob, we cannot, I'm sorry, Bob, I'm looking at Davis, and I know of somebody named Bob Davis. It's so funny. So we have it up there, the Davis Report at WordPress.com. MK, thanks once again. Will you keep us posted in 2021, and will you be safe out there, buddy? I'm going to do my best. Excellent. Gentlemen, Mike, Chuck, Bill, thank you so much. Uh, everybody out there in chat, uh, hopefully you got all your questions answered. We can't wait to, uh, to see you all again. Coming up uh, June 1st, we have Bigfoot legend Thomas Steenberg joins us. And then June 15th, we have the return of Julie Ranch with our special guest David Ellis for part two. So, gentlemen, thank you very uh, – ha have a great night. Everybody stay safe and keep on squatching. Bill, go ahead and say goodnight for us, will you? Good night from behind tall Hello, trees. If you enjoyed As the always, previous program, I'll subscribe to the time. channel, hit the like button, and leave a comment.